Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. Just to make you aware, this podcast may contain some explicit slash offensive language. And if that's not your thing, you don't have to listen. But I have given you a warning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. You don't know the half of it, but yeah, um, I'm anyway. Time, yeah, I'm, good, on, I'm skating on the thinnest <laughs> ice known to man. Like. He said, and um, they put a poison in the tank that just instantly kills them. He went, and we've run out of it, so we cut their heads off with shovels. Suddenly, bang! The whole boat exploded. Take your sort of eight-inch-long piranha and imagine that at four, five, maybe six feet. I said, I've revived your dead fish. <laughs> F off, he said. You haven't. That was just humongous. It was... I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I'm just battling this fish out and on. I know it's a black man. I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'll never be a naughty boy again. If you catch fish and you return them to the water, then you are my brother. Welcome to the Nash Off Hook podcast. This week, I've assembled a consortium of our youngsters. One of them might not appear yet. <laughs> oh dear, 42. <laughs> you might have fathered seven kids. No, I'm joking. But he is young. You're all young. And so we're going to talk modern day carp fishing scene and what that means to you guys as you guys are in the best position. And to be fair, you've covered a pretty broad spectrum of all things modern day. I've got Jacob, Finley and Henry. Boys, start with Jacob. How have you been recently? What have you been up to? Good, thanks. How are you? Lovely, mate. Lovely to see you. What have yes, you been up you to? Oh, a lot of fishing. Not a lot of where well, I've been away with Henry loads into Europe, which we'll probably touch on a little bit more. Jumped in his van and escaped London, which is the name of the new series. Plug plug. Um, <laughs> nice. But yeah, loads of fishing. Um, most of it in Europe, but getting back into the campaign fishing in London now. Sold my boat, moving into a flat, so it's been pretty hectic. But other than that, I'm all good, thanks. Lovely, Finn. What you been doing, mate? Uh, yeah, had BCAC last week. Is that a disease or? <laughs> <laughs> it's a competition. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty. Um, didn't go well. Didn't qualify to the final. Absolute nightmare. But other than that, going fishing later. So. Can we talk also about the fact that you are leaving a wedding, leaving your missus at a wedding and then going to fish Abbey Lakes in France? Yeah, the key part is I'm going Abbey Lakes in France. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's brilliant, mate. All right, yeah, lovely wedding, Miss. See you later. I'm off. You don't know how she's. You know how she's getting back. Do you? You don't know how she's going to get back from the wedding, back home. That sounds like her problem, like doesn't it? Like <laughs> my problem. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> oh, I, I hope this comes out after. Um, Henry, mate, what have you been doing? Um, I've been doing a little bit of like Jacob said, going to Europe a fair bit, but we're not gone for a while now, have we? Like nope. five, five-ish weeks. Mm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which has been a while. We went every week for <laughs> we a couple literally of months, for about fine. yeah two months. We went through which every single week. We'd come back for like five days and then go again, and come back for five days and then go again. Um, yeah, it was great. I loved it. It was so much fun. Job, mate. I got the wrong job. Mm. You boys are living a dream, aren't you? It was good fun to be. Fun. Yeah, it was really good fun. But then since then, I've been doing like the odd bit here and there, but I'm not really into anything at the moment. You were just waiting for your next trip, aren't you? Pretty much. Yeah. Which is November, sadly. No, that's our next trip. I'm going in August. I'm going in two weeks. Oh, you missed out the Royston trip, mate. Oh, yeah. Me and you went filmed at Royston. How did I, how could I forget? That yeah. was incredible. Oh, Zigs in the rain and Zigs low pressure. Zigs in the rain. It was the perfect weather for fishing on the bottom. We had to do a zig piece, didn't we? Uh, we, uh, we got I, a few. I did see, I'm going to say it, one of the most incredible carp captures that I've ever witnessed as that last fish, mate. Yeah. Incredible angling. No two ways about it. Why? What happened? Wait for the video, mate. Wait for the Come video. on. Wait for the video. Just wait for that last fish. Incredible. Mm. Um, it's just a mega one. Um, right, boys, we're going to talk modern day carp scene. You are very different. Or oh, there's a little bit of crossover here and there with certain elements. But what I want to get a feel of and sort of contextualise, big word, for the audience, the modern day carp scene to you individually. Jacob, let's start with you. For you, <coughs> what is your fishing? What does the majority of it entail? And how is that different to, let's say... 10, 20 years ago? Ooh. I would say out of out of probably the rest of the industry, the style of angling I do is probably the one that hasn't changed in terms of, um, yeah, like 20 years ago, the scene within like the urban scene like London, obviously the only difference is it wasn't as known. Yeah. There wasn't as much content to consume and for people to see the venues and that there was actually a lot of good fish in there. But other than that, most people still don't want to do it. So it's still quiet. The venues are still very similar. Um, 
Yeah, not a lot changes really. It's it's more popular and it's more of a trend than it was, say, 20 years ago. But it doesn't mean that more people necessarily are, are doing it, especially in London. Maybe in other cities it's a bit different, but in London, to get access into central London's a nightmare anyway. No one would, oh yeah, I live outside. Let's drive into London and fish the canal. They'll just go to nice peaceful lakes. So unless you live in the city, you don't really want to indulge in that side of angling. But I, for, so for me, yeah, it hasn't really changed. I'd say it's probably a better one. For Finn and Henry, there's topics I can talk about in terms of modern day carp fishing, but I think with the urban scene, for me, I've been in London now for probably about eight years, and for me, nothing's changed at all. Um, definitely maybe the way like social media and the content's consumed, and the, the way you have to change slightly and, and adapt is a bit different, but the actual fishing itself is the same, and the accessibility to get to the venues is the same. Whereas, if like syndicates, which obviously you guys will touch on, is not the same as it was 15 years ago. Do you think that that <clears throat> that network of information has changed? Because obviously, because <clears throat> obviously, when you talk about London, there's mm-hmm. been a lot of you talked about the media coverage, and that's a general theme for all the sort of modern day scene. Yeah. There's a lot of information out there. You haven't seen an upsurge in anglers. You haven't seen an upsurge of people going to different places. Is there still an element of sort of that is maybe uh, I don't know a no fishing zone. You're going to go fishing that to maybe snare something unknown or big, or that is a no fishing park, but you know a big and resides in there. Is it mm. still like that? Yeah, is it? Yeah, and that part of it is, I guess, getting a little bit worse. Mm. So there's less and less um, venues that you're openly allowed to fish without too much restriction. So like, if you can find somewhere within like a built up area, so like an urban area. You're, you'd be very lucky to find somewhere that's like open fishing, tents allowed, night fishing allowed. Mm. Like most of them, it's like days only and no tents. Having having said that, because they're not syndicates or ran by clubs, they don't have hired staff or they don't have like a committee or bailiffs or anything. So it is just like a council rule um, because obviously they don't have angling at the forefront of their mind when when it comes there, we sort of get pushed to the back of the pile. So you can normally get away with, as long as you're respectful to the locals and the dog walkers and the people, you can normally get away with, say, like doing the nights and stuff. Um, but that puts people off because you could just rock up, say you drove into London to do two nights. You could just set up and just get kicked off immediately. Yeah. Whereas if for me, I just then hop on the train and go somewhere else. But yeah, that I guess that's why it's still so quiet because I'd say out of... 15, 20 venues within the city, like ones that I still fish, there's probably three that you can actually get a ticket and fish without being disturbed or told that you can't fish there or whatever. So really you're saying accessibility. And it gets worse. Yeah, accessibility. Slowly gets worse, yeah. Because like one, it's the case where like one complaint and the fishing will be banned. Yeah. Like one, one swan swims through the line on like a busy park where they allowed fishing and someone calls up the police and says, there's a swan in the line and all that. Yeah. A few of them and it's the fishing will be will be taken off because they don't make any money from the fishing really. Some of these big parks that allow it. So for what reason, if they get a negative press, would they keep it going? Yeah, I see. Fish stocks wise, talk to me about that. In terms of the amount of big fish, have you seen a surge in terms of size? It's quite, the, the, the venues, as you say, are quite, mm. r- they're rarely fished, so to speak. There's yeah. some that are more fish than others. But you're saying there's not an influx of more anglers. Would you say the fish are a similar size? Would you say nah, the bigger? fish are growing. Yeah, yeah, the fish are definitely growing. I'd say, like, when I first started fishing, it would have been like in London, it would have been like 2018, 19. And the fish then were way bigger than what they were up north. Like I was fishing for a 28 might be the bigger in the stretch of canal. Whereas if in London, like there's, there's 40 pounders in multiple different stretches of river and canal. Now, like say for the docks, for example, because I monitored it so well, because I lived on the water in the boat, there was 140. Now there's like three, four fish that are breaking right. 40 pound. And like in some of the park lakes, you're seeing fish like that are coming out at like mid thirties that were like 20 pounders. They're all growing for sure. They're definitely growing. That's one thing I would say has changed. Um, okay, which is which is a bit weird, isn't it? Really, because you'd think that what's the difference five years ago? Why wasn't there already like four or five forties there? And maybe they died off. It's just coincidence. But I'd say there's a lot more venues now with like a mid forty in that didn't have a mid forty in five six years ago. That's one thing. But I think that's for for everything as well. I think there's gonna be a lot of themes that run through every bit of my every, carp yeah. fishing. Do you think though? Oh yeah, because syndicates have all now got fifties yeah. in, haven't they? Where they didn't have ten years Loads ago, of, like 
Cashing forty pound in the UK now. Used not to as be like why a do you, huge thing why do you now. reckon that is? More anglers putting bait in, or just... I think for, it's hard to say for the urban one because no one's baiting. No one. Yeah, yeah, it is a difficult one there. But um, I think for I think for everywhere else, it'll be the strain as well. Obviously, though, the strain strains now that's a lot different to the strains that were around mm. 20, 25 years yeah. ago. Um, they're all bred to grow really quickly aren't they like that's the yeah. that, that's one of the main aims they've got for them is to put on weight as optimally as possible and bait's getting better and people put a lot of bait in now i think I that's think the, i think the key is you said there more bait going in yeah. isn't it? it's not necessarily everybody mm. i mean all the baits are brilliant but you look back at sort of i don't know yately days or whatever people are making like the hmv they're making mm. baits that are really nutritious is, is the paramount importance mm. it's not attraction nowadays all the baits are as pretty much as good as each other. I know I'm going to say... Like, Apart from Scopex Quiz, it's well better than all the ones. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm joking. The old corporate like, well done, um, But yeah, but there's more of it going in generally, isn't there, mm. I reckon, than I think, just like uh, yeah. six or seven baits. People it, are putting a bit out, It depends they? what you're comparing it to because it, what where, where we say the modern scene is, is it the last 10 years of the modern scene? 10 years, haven't you? So I, like, from the last 10 years to the 10 years before, I don't think there's a big difference in bait quality. I think the biggest difference is quantity. Mm. I think mean, that's that's the difference. Especially since lockdown, I reckon, since mm. new people have got in. Mm. Like, I've noticed that a lot. The amount of people on the bank just filling it in. Yeah. What's mad, when you look at it, you look at like the time frame of, of carp fishing from what it came to when it was like fishing with a quill and, and all this technology then come from it and the amount of carp anglers that now go out. The time frame isn't actually that much, is it? No, if you look at existence and life and other... Um, other professions and things like that have been going for hundreds of years. Of course, like carp have got bigger in the last 10 years because when did carp fishing really get big? Like what, 30 years ago, 40 years ago? Nineteen six, like 60s, 70s, 80s. Like it's not been around that long. It's not been like 200 years. <clears throat> no, but I don't necessarily, that means that equates to bigger carp. No, I think- but I just think like they've probably always been growing. They have always been growing. Like there'll be one 40 in the UK, like back in the Yately days or two. And then there's like three, then four. And I think in another 10 years, there'll probably be loads of 60s. Yeah. Okay, it'll all, every five years it'll probably go it's probably it feels like why well, have they suddenly grown but they've probably always been grown at this rate mm. it's just that we've now this is the time we've got into it like at this kind of level do you think the increase of like social media has made anglers aware of them fish though and like, do, you re- do, you reckon, do you reckon say 20 years ago like me personally I don't believe there was I don't know how many 60s are in mm. the UK now but say there's 20 60s yeah. 20 years ago was there still that I'm nah. like, no. I don't think the, ma- the magazines like were covering yeah. it, weren't yeah. they? Like the big fish anglers, were, they'd have a 40. It was like, wow. Now it's like every lake almost yeah. has a yeah. two or three I 40s. Mean, everyone says that social media, everything's so much more well documented now, and it is, but it was still really well documented 20, 30 yeah. years, like in the 90s onwards, basically. As soon as the magazines were about, mm. everything's been so well documented. It's probably just the speed at which the information's transferred to slow down. It's sorry, it's, it's quickened because of social media and how it's so instant just to post something and everyone know about it, and as opposed to waiting a week or a month for the magazine to come out. But it's still well documented, yeah. wasn't it? If if a forty pounder got caught twenty years ago, twenty five years ago, <clears throat> yeah, like a new forty pounder from somewhere that didn't didn't have one or it was a quite unique thing, people would yeah. know about it pretty quickly, wouldn't they? I reckon you've got you've got the availability of big fish now, numbers of them is definitely a lot higher. Loads higher. Like, yeah. ridiculous. Like, you look 10 years ago, and, like, they're not, as you say, there might be the odd big fish, but they were quite spread. Mm. You wouldn't have a venue that would have the chance of, like, I've been on some places that got, like, 40, 40, 40, 40 pounders. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You're yeah. like, that's obscene. That was never there. Before, no, no, yeah. no. And, and I think a lot of the drive with that, and we're going to come to sort of other chapters which you guys involve in in terms of your sort of mainstay angling in the modern scene but you've got day tickets and the fact that it is a bigger industry there's more money in it and to compete as a day ticket venue nowadays and draw people in people want big fish so whether you do that by supplementing your feed more as well as anglers feed or whether you do that by buying strains of carp that grow quick big like either way if you've got 40 40s in it and you've got two forties in it, I know which day ticket most people are, are opting for because everybody wants that big mm. forty pounder in their arms, don't they? There is that sort of I think definitely more sort of commercial not money driven because that sounds horrible, but more sort of finance based for day ticket venues and accessibility, definitely, to get people through the door and start making money. They they need that. It's a commodity, isn't it, in a horrible way. 
I think that is a, a big part of what's driven the change. Is that there's so much more money in fishing now, especially since COVID as well. Mm. I mean, that's that's where so much change has happened is because there is a lot more money in fishing, and that's driven a lot of what. That's driven why there is so much more media now because a lot more people need to promote their tackle. Promote their tackle. Like there. that's why, like you say, there are so many more fish everywhere, and that's also why there's so many more of quite similar fish as well because they're the best ones for growing and people want to catch big carp so they all get the same strain because they're the best growers that, that that's why the fish are getting bigger as well because they're that strain because there's a lot more bait going in as well because yeah i, I just think that the, the money is is a big driver in, in why changes happen so much. but then conversely you're sort of drafted in to speak all things crazy European adventures because that's a massive part of the modern mm. scene. It's, it's become very fashionable for people to go out and sort of explore Europe. I, I mean, apart from obviously the fact that you're taking a bit of gear from over here, bait-wise, tackle-wise, and going out there, there are a lot of public venues where, what's what's a French public licence? 100 euros. It's nothing, isn't it? Mm. But I think that's why it's probably quite fashionable. I don't want to even say fashionable because, but that's why it's, it's getting more and more popular because I think people are rejecting the the more commercial side of things and they want to go and have that adventure and i think it's so hard in the uk sometimes to really have that feel like you're going on that big adventure because everything is a lot more commercialized and you've got to follow a lot follow a lot more rules and stuff and <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's, it's hard to have an adventure if you go somewhere where you know exactly what's in there, exactly what's been caught. Everything's manicured perfectly and it's all very comfortable. It's, I don't know, it's, it, I, I feel Hassan's like... Hassan's dream, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but that is a massive change. Just what you said there is a massive change to when I think back to like the glory years on Yateley. You knew exactly what the fish were. You even knew what spots you were fishing. Mm. There's Mary's table. Mm. There's Basil's but bush. But there was some kind of like accolade. There was some kind of like level of achievement out of getting that. Do you get what I mean? It's like and is that not the it's same? Like, as going it's like, to but, like but, but, nah, but, but those not anymore though because there's so many of them, there's so many of them. So it's like it could just be down to luck nowadays. Do you get what I mean? Like back then, say you went to Yateley and you caught the big one from there, and you went to another place and caught the big one from there. It's like God, he's shit hot. Like he must be a sick angler. Now, if I go to thing and just catch a random forty or fifty pounder, no one cares. So I'd probably rather just target somewhere in London with 140 and catch that 140. And to me, that's my own little challenge and no one cares rather than go to like a lake with 40, 40s in it. But, but it depends what you like. And I also think that I'm not saying places like, I'm not saying Yately still exists now, but the, the circuit, that circuit scene st- does still exist now. Mm. And that's always been part of it. And that, what, that, that still exists. But what doesn't exist, I don't think as much is, those lakes you can go down to, a day ticket lake, for instance, where it's not, some bloke comes around once a day, catch it, gets 10 pounds off you. No one does really know what's in there. It's not really very well manicured. The the strain in there, uh, you don't really know how they've ended up there. It is, that, because those sort of waters now, people realise that there's money in it, so they put a lot more investment into Invested, it to make yeah. sure it's accessible to everyone. Everything's really manicured. They want to know exactly what fish are in there so they can monitor weights. And because obviously they're like a 20, 30 pound carp's worth quite yeah. a lot of money. So they can't just have like, oh, I don't really know what's in here, mate. Everyone knows exactly what's in there. <clears throat> that type of fishing doesn't yeah. exist anymore. The circuit still exists and that's fine. And it's got that, what spot, how many times it's been out exactly because that's what circuit fishing that's like inherent about that style of angling. But that adventure fishing is lost a little bit because those type of waters... I just don't think that they exist as much in England anymore because any water that that does have decent fish in has now become quite commercialised. So that's why I think people go over to Europe quite a lot. For you, that European trend, obviously you're seeing people pass and go and explore and we talked about the French public lake stuff. Are you seeing a trend of more people going public lakes than pay lakes? Um, person, I still think that it's more, more people go to the pay lakes. Yeah, way more. Definitely still more, but I am seeing an increase in... in but it's probably because that's the type of fishing I do and the media that I'm involved with. So that's what people will message me about. But that, like this year, I get messaged so much about where to go in Belgium, where to go in France, yeah. where to go in Holland. And it's, um, it's the thing that I get messaged about the most. And I think it is definitely increasing because I think people are realising how easy it is to go over. And I think before it always seemed like a bit of a challenge to figure out where you get your licence, 
where can you fish? Where can you do this? Where can you do that? But now it's, it's so straightforward. Like you go online, you buy your license. That's what, <laughs> sorry, over. sorry to interrupt. But that's what's mad <laughs> is I'm not like digging anyone or anything like that. Like everyone obviously finds their enjoyment and whatever they, they think is, well, whether it's a drive or a passion, or whether they just go to escape life and, and go for the therapy side of it. But for me, I can't see a, an argument for why you would get involved in like a busy syndicate even if it has got loads of big uns, when literally you can drive within a few hours and go to Europe where there's lakes, canals, they're basically just on steroids compared to the UK without the syndicate hold, leaving buckets and waiting, it's come off that spot. And you've got the element of, of adventure. The carp, there's more carp that are bigger and they're not all like big French horrible ones or whatever. Like there's, I thought that, I didn't think like I, was, I had any interest in European fishing. Obviously, going with Henry, he's got some good spots, to be fair. I give him that. His pins are good. Yours but he took crap. me to some places, and it's like, I was like, this is mad. If this lake was in the UK, it would be like £2,000 ticket. Do you and I'm, I'm just thinking, why would people not go there? Why would you go to a lake? And it's obviously, they may not know, but there's some people who do know. Like, who is it? And Nashu argues about it. All the boys. Like, I remember you did Tommy's, the... like, done all that European fishing, and then still says, now nah, the UK syndic is better. And I'm like, you... how? It's, like, mental. You did the... I think it was the podcast... You... It was, I think it was the podcast you were on. With it, Tommy, wasn't it? And I think Ollie and Tom both said that um, UK, UK is better. Yeah, that's mad. They, they did say <laughs> that they mad. think that we'd change our views when we got older. So it's very easy to say mm. this because like, they've lived through it but as well. But it might they've be for them all. a lifestyle, Maybe. not just purely the angling. It's like the, the meeting the people and that thing of like, oh, I had it off that margin. It's never done a margin bite before. I had the first 40 off the top. And it's like, because a lot of anglers you see, like especially like the older guys, they love telling a story and you can see the amount of passion they've got for the, the one they had, that one, and back 20 years ago, this. So maybe for them, that's a big part of it. But the ones who just purely want the escape, I think the, the European style is like so much better. Do you not think like over time, like people listening to this podcast now, they might have never thought about fishing in France. Mm. And now they're listening to this and they're like, oh, I might actually go give it a go. Do you not reckon in like 10, 20 years time? Could be a lot busier. It do, will, do you yeah, reckon yeah. France will. and Europe's yeah. going to become will what be. the UK yeah. is? It has to be. But then, do be you reckon, but then do you reckon the UK is going to stay how it is? Or do you reckon it's then going to sort of take a step back and be a little bit quieter? No, I think the UK Do you reckon it's just going to be busy? It's not enough mess. water for anglers. Yeah, I think that, that thing exactly that. Yeah. There's just not enough water in the UK for how many anglers there are. I think you're right. I think in the in in it Europe, there become, and I mean, I've seen it already a few times this year where I, I, what I sort of find is that the, the public waters, I think they'll go through like cycles where they'll be really, really busy because it gets blown and a load of people will go there. For instance, where me and... Dan went and fished in Belgium last year where we went earlier this year. We got so lucky that weekend because we were pretty much the only ones on there. Mm. I've heard that, that complex since yeah. it's opened has been like crazy, busy. crazy busy, crazy busy. And I think it'll be like that now for three or four years. But then as people all start, because people people do get, the reason they, they're going to fish these public waters is for that escapism. So if they go twice and both times they go, there's 20 people fishing it. They're going to go, this is a bit shit. I don't want to go anymore. I think everyone will start thinking that. So in four years' time, it, it will go back to being quite quiet again and then it will explode and become popular. And it's like at the moment, there's a lot of like big reservoirs around Dijon. I've noticed that there, whenever I speak to people, they're always going, oh yeah, we're going to go to these reservoirs near Dijon. And that's where we went. Mm. Um, and we, Pull it yeah, yeah. And, and it was too busy, wasn't it? And, mm. and we ended up leaving. Um I think that <clears throat> you'll have sections that become really, really busy. And then then in a couple of years, they'll become less busy again because of how busy they have been. I think if you're, because of how much water's in France, you've just got to keep sort of searching. It depends yeah. how much you want to keep searching, how much you want to risk a holiday. Because I, because I go over quite a bit, I'll quite happily, maybe once in a while, go and <clears throat> not even know if you're allowed to fish there, what's in there. I'll just find it on a Google map and think, that looks quite cool. I'm going to give it a go. Yeah. You might get there and there's no fishing allowed or there's no night fishing, whatever. And he still gets the rods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just pay the fine. <laughs> <laughs> but for a lot of people, if they've got one trip a year... They want to make sure it's a bang. They're not going to go, well, let's, let's, let's completely risk it. Bet. Not even pay lakes. They're going to go, I'm, I know if I go to this public lake, I know it's got a good head of carp in. I know I can night fish. I know I can use boats. It's safe. Yeah, it's going to be busy because loads of people know about it. But mm. I'm not going to go, get kicked off and 
maybe not even get the rods but out that's why they'll always be depending on the style that you like they'll always be like a little gem every now and again yeah because yeah. they'll always be somewhere where someone else doesn't want to go that you find the motivation to go to I was thinking before when when um, Finn was talking I was saying like for example Finn and I is like two opposite ends of angling yeah exactly yeah. and obviously because mm. we both create content as a full time job now that does slightly change it. But for me, most of my like drive for fishing is like the escape and like the, it was that target in that, because I'd wake up and I would think about that catching that fish and that's what would drive me and motivate me. Whereas if fins might be more of like a competitive side. Yeah. Mm. So like him escaping and going to a lake in France, even if he catches loads on a, on a big public lake, that might not be any level of achievement to think because he'll be like, yeah, but no one knows about it and they could all just be easy to catch and how am I proving myself? Do you know what I mean? So it's completely different. Yeah. Like how I can describe it, it's like if I was dan- if I was dancing professionally, there we like, go. sorry, but this is the only way I can compare it. <laughs> there we go. I'd have no interest in going to some random quiet place where, the, where it's like really good for dancing, but no one ever knows you. I'd rather be in like a really competitive situation where it's dead busy and everyone's there all together and it's like, because that's what drives you. Yeah, yeah. But I guess yeah. for some people, they just go to get away from it all. So for them people, you're missing out if you're not going abroad. But for the people who are doing the circuit scene, competitive scene, obviously the UK has that really <clears throat> that core competitive side. I'd argue that the circuit's out there. I know a lot of anglers who are like, there are anglers the, here, mate. That's a circuit. You mm. can't say that's not a modern there's, day there's, circuit. There's, there's circuit waters in France. hundred percent. A million percent. A million, million And it's percent. the same. I, don't, I, I mean, I get the escapism, but I don't think... A, I don't think a lot of people are doing it for that. I think a lot of people are doing it because I've seen Jacob go and bread bomb a big Belgian canal comment. <laughs> I think I think it is. I think, yeah, I, think I don't think they want the escapism, mate. I think they want, they want a big, the big part, part of it, and maybe, they yeah. want to go there and emulate what they've seen for a long time. That that might be Alan and Ollie going on a Eurobanks. That might be Henry catching a massive Spanish one. That could be anything. <clears throat> it could be you. It could be Finn catching a massive Twas Hills carp. They want to go and do that. And those waters, I think. The more and more publicity, the more that scene, because of numbers, because of accessibility now, it's easy to get across on that tunnel and it's mm-hmm. half an hour and you're the other side. I think a lot of people, especially if they're southern based, it ain't too much effort. Instead mm-hmm. of driving to Farlows, which could be Ramo on the M25, you could nip across to to get the old tunnel, your job done, and you'd be in Belgium in an hour, mm-hmm. aren't you? So I think there's a lot of things that have conspired to mean that that is now, even though everybody talks really romantically about escapism, and if you want to search for it and risk it, you'll find it. But I think there's as many people... Most people don't go for There's that. a lot of the same lads that I know that instead of fishing in the UK, have dropped a syndicate ticket, they're out there every mm. three or four weeks and doing five or six nights. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's a mad one, isn't it? Because when you, when you think about it, Sorry, I'm gonna, it sounds like I'm getting all deep here, but I'm not like, <laughs> like humans, or oh, I feel like yeah. most humans, it's not that deep, but like, I feel like as humans, like, we always want to improve to some level. So like, I think there is a group of people that maybe have a busy job and go for that escape side, but I think like you were saying, most of the time it isn't. And even though they don't want to be a professional angler and they don't want to have it as a job, they still want to go and like achieve something. So if it hasn't got that like big fish, like all that kind of thing, because sometimes I look back and I think about it, it's mad the amount of time anglers devote to catching that fish. It's like, well, that's what's driven them in that time. So I think that's also a big part of it. Like they might just be like a random guy has a full time job, but he wants to go to that lake because he's seen that 50 and he'll do anything to catch it. It has to be like that drive behind it. And I think yeah, yeah. there's more of that in the UK. And that's why most, and for Tom and for Ollie, they probably get a kick off that, off like having the big and out of their syndicate. Whereas if they might say that the one in the big lake in France is meaningless. Finn, you're on the other end of the spectrum to this, mate. Your day to day, I know you have been abroad and you've had some great trips and you've got some planned, but your day to day angling is a very, another modern scene. It's not been that modern. There's been day tickets for a long time, but the modern day day ticket scene is probably where you're based. For you, mate, that. That scene, how has that changed in the course of time that, that you've been around? It's became an absolute mess. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, so like, so yeah, the, that's the big expensive. one. Expensive. Yeah. Like, so I've been car fishing now on like day tickets for probably 10, 12 years. Mm. And to be honest, apart from when lockdown hit and like there was a new sort of wave of anglers coming through, 
it's always been busy to me. I've just always known it to be running to your swims with buckets, anglers everywhere. If you look back 20 years ago before I started fishing, yes, day tickets were a lot quieter. Um, but in terms of now, there's a lot more day tickets in the country. Back 20 years ago, there was just like your mainstream ones. Linear was just coming on the scene, like Bluebell, Farlows. But now there's so many smaller day tickets, like little farm ponds, spots that, like... I still go on Instagram today and find out about day tickets that I've never heard of. Like where you went last year. What was that called? Uh, yeah, I, I'd never heard of that until last year. There's like spots like that that just pop up. And I think the reason there's more day tickets be, like being made is A, because in the UK there's more anglers. But like we touched on earlier, like there's just so much money in fishing now. Like day tickets... It's probably where like 80, 90% of like income for big businesses come from. Like all the gear that a company makes, yes, there's people doing urban stuff. There's people going out to Europe, but I would say 80 to 90% of people go to day tickets because it's mm-hmm. easily accessible. Like most people have a standard nine to five, Monday to Friday. They can only get out Saturday and Sunday. So they're like, we might as well go to linear. But like in terms of, yeah, it's, it's hard to say it's, like we mentioned earlier, the fish are getting bigger. Mm. Um, I think there's been a big change on day tickets very recently, post COVID, mate. Forget weekends, mate. The weeks yeah, are rammed. To be fair, yeah. The weeks mm. are rammed. I'm going on there thinking, oh, it's a Monday, Tuesday, we're filming, there'll be nobody on there. And you go on the big complexes, mate, and it is solid because people are working from home or they, they're sort of either not going into the office or doing whatever. And from what I've seen, I've been to a few, mate. It, there isn't that distinction now between rocking up on a Monday and rocking up on a Friday. Maybe they're a little bit busier on the weekends, but it, there ain't much of a difference now. That gap's closed, I think. Yeah, you are right there, to be fair, especially like when was lock- like 2020, 2021, whether you turned up on a Monday, a Wednesday or Saturday. I have noticed like, especially since winter just gone, day tickets have became a little bit quieter. Hopefully I'm not jinxing it. But like, I can turn up to spots now and normally get a decent peg. It isn't sort of like as big of a manic rush as it used to be. It's still busy, don't get me wrong. I know what you're saying when you turn up midweek. Like you think, what are these people doing? Do they not have jobs? Are they just fishing? <laughs> you're like, we can't all be out fishing for a living. So yeah, I'm not sure why that is. Um, like I say, probably just because of media is getting bigger. It's inspiring people to get out on the bank more. I'm not really, I can't really think of a definite answers to why it has become more popular sorry sorry not on the mic cart fishing is like a drug <laughs> I think that's what I mean I think about it now and I'm like why is he so, so deep are you all <laughs> no but he's no but like okay, I've got yeah. the video dressed as MC Hammer <laughs> 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 so I was waiting for that no but it's like I remember when I was like 17, 18 I, all I cared about was fishing I used to drive everyone mad around me just banging on about it and every given second I would just go fishing. (laughs) And now obviously it's a job. I look at it from an outside perspective to the people who have that like same thing where it's like fishing is like, oh my God. And obviously I still love fishing, but it's a job and I edit the films and all that kind of stuff. But it's just mad. And that's why it's so busy because more people have come into the sport and they get hooked on it and they're like so drawn to it. So the lakes are busy all all the time now. Yeah, and it's crazy as well because like how you're saying like fishing's like a drug. When you were like describing the urban scene and when you were talking about fishing in Europe, mm. to me that's like refreshing and I'm like, oh, I want to go out there. Mm. But I'm still addicted to going and catching yeah. a load of simos. Like, it's just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> although I want to go do mm-hmm. that, I'm still always drawn back to fishing just the same lakes. Like, I don't know what it is. And like, when you're on about targeting certain fish, like, I think I've targeted one 16 pound common from like a park lake near me. That's the only target fish I've ever targeted. And I'd never target a fish ever again. Really? Yeah. But then like when you were talking about this, I was trying not to get too too deep. But I was like, what motivates me when I go fishing? I ain't got a clue. Bites, like, I'm the same. Like, bites. Like, not, not no, even, no, is, not, e- same thing, yeah. not even bites. Like when I go to linear, I'm not motivated to be like, right, I need to catch like more than everyone on this lake I don't know what it is like I just go fishing and I don't want to be like oh I just go fishing to enjoy my time on the the bank Mm. but like I go there get the rods out catch a few fish I'm happy if I catch a big and yes it's a bonus but whether it's 
10 pound 20 30 40 pound like i'm just happy mm. uh, uh, but but then you're talking about like all these magical adventures and i'm like that sounds pretty cool but give it's me weird. a similar one i'm happy it's yeah. what you like yeah, isn't it what you like. but, but I, i'm very similar to you on that film because i although that's my favorite going over to europe and stuff i still like i've been i've been roisting two four nights in the past two weeks and it's not like my my favorite place in the world to go but when i'm there i'm like oh my like you see fish you're just yeah. so obsessed with it like when i've my housemates and stuff they don't like fishing at all and we'll be at parties and they'll be like they'll come up what i do and we'll start talking about it and then they'll say so why do you like fishing so much and i literally so i tried so many times to explain yeah why i like it so much i, I just can't, can't. I, I, just, I just obsessed with it and I, like that trying to work for that bite and get that fish in the net yeah is just like yeah. Why do you like it so much? I don't know. It's just fucking incredible. And then you put it just back. I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I, don't need to get it. And you can feel yourself when you explain it, being like, "This doesn't make sense." Yeah. What I'm saying about why it's so good, <laughs> but it just is. And I, I tell you what was a good story, and it happened here. I'm not sure if it was this Christmas or last Christmas, but after the old Christmas party, the morning after, Polish was here, and um, I went out. So this is like the morning after. I've went outside started freelining whatever I could find on the office pond. I think it was like a bit of domino, like pizza crust. And Polish was like there stood like thinking like, what are you doing? And he just, he just looked at me and he was like, you really love fishing, don't you? <laughs> and like when he said that, I was like, to be fair, like, He's trying, it, yeah. like, it, like he is like, yeah, I do love fishing because I'm out here when it's minus two. Like with a massive with a, hangover, with a massive hangover <laughs> freelining a bit of pizza, trying to catch a two pound common. Mm. But like, I had just as much enjoyment that morning, freezing, than I would if I was in France catching 50 pounders or if I was at Linear catching 20 pounders. I don't get the same enjoyment for like fishing for other species like pike or roach or sea fishing. Like I just don't get that enjoyment. I think carp fishing is just its own little thing. Mm. Like that's my motivation, carp fishing. In that, in that scene, that day ticket scene, Obviously, everyone's got a passion for. We wouldn't do it as job as you couldn't last it. You just burn out. And we'll talk about sort of influencers and all that sort of stuff that's come into play in modern times. But for you, throughout the course of linear, apart from the busy nature of it, obviously there's a whole new complex, mate. There's tar farm yeah. now, isn't there? So there is definite drive to go in there. Fish wise, obviously linear. And we're only referencing any because you spend a lot of yeah. time there. But I can talk Bluebell because I've spent some time on there. A lot of the fish are still there. There's a few that have gone. But there's a wave of linear of like the big plated, et cetera. There's sort of a new generation of, of, of similar yeah. stock, isn't there? There's not those sort of maybe standout, recognisable sort of yeah. Oxford fish, shall we say. Yeah, there's but a- I reckon in like 10 years time, the fish that are in there now will become... It's probably hard for people who fish linear now to think, oh yeah, that twenty-five pound sim or scaly thing that doesn't really look that pretty is going to become the next big thing. But like the box common, for example, in St John's, twenty years ago, like that would have just been a bog standard common. No one would have thought that's going to be like the most sought after fish in the lake. So I'm sure, give it t- linear is going through like a funny period at the moment yeah. because obviously you've got that generation of like big plated Kempe's linear which have now passed now you've sort of got this weird part where there's big fish in there but you're not really like there aren't really any of the named historical ones of linear but come 10 20 years time do you think be- it's going to have those is what i'm basically saying do you think it will have it's got the beast of braise nose hasn't it that, for the me, that's, like a, that, that's a modern yeah. day. That's a modern day linear fish, isn't it? The beast. It is. What are you laughing at, Jacob? <laughs> He's gone. You've just absolutely blown his target. He's gone, mate. A <laughs> beast. But what I'm saying is, in a modern yeah. day sense, nah. in a modern day sense, that that is a target, isn't it? It's a fifty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> You've done me with that. <laughs> What have I done with that? I think it's the way you said it. You've, You've got the beast. beast. <laughs> the beast of braise nose. I'm not even going to comment. Beast of nose, I don't mate. want anyone to hate me. I can't comment on that one. No, so, so like, obviously you've got so there's the beast, and in B2, there's one called for Punisher, similar <laughs> to the beast. That's you, mate. Isn't it? Yeah. That's him. Even You're the, the Punisher. Not even Finn no. can't say it without laughing. But. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> For example, in Oxlace, there's a mirror in there now. To be fair, it probably is one of the older ones, but that for me is the best fish on the complex at the moment. Yeah. And I'm sure 
people will know about it now because it's a forty pound. It's scaly and. Jacob might disagree and say it's ugly, but I'd show other people and they'd say it's a pretty fish. Jacob caught a 50 pound ghosty and tried to make out like <laughs> I'm by no means like. He went down to pet shop, mate, bred it for a few years, fed it. And I'm by no it. means like one of them, like, oh, but, it's horrendous. Uh. But, like, but for it, me, it just doesn't drive me. But that's what I said. There's a difference between me and fitting, and I'm not knocking yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah. If I. I used to like when I was really young. Used to love match fishing, and if I still carried on down that route, I'd probably be exactly the same as Finn. I wouldn't care about this elusive common in this random lake that no one cares about. Yeah, I would rather go for the beast from linear because everyone knows that like, oh, the odds of getting that are super slim with the amount of carp in there. But yeah, but just, like, yeah, in terms of like the next generation, so obviously big plated Kempe's box. Like we were saying earlier, carp fishing's only boomed properly in the UK however many years ago and like part of me thinks them fish are only known to like the air classes they are now because they were the fish back when carp fishing started like i think anything with history surrounding it and carp fishing has that little carpy yeah they won't be in like they'll never be another like fully plated if you know what i mean no, because i, 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 think, by the will. Will. I think, I, I think will. Will. Yeah, they're, they're, like i think there's a probably a lot of 20 25 pound fish in linear now mm. That look as good as those fish that fit. Yeah. Said, yeah. When they were twenty twenty five pounds. Yeah. And but, once they get caught and made, but it's not the fish that makes it so good. No. Nah, it... When them twenty five pounders make it to the size, not I'm not even say the level. When they make it to the size that the big plated was, every other lake in the country's fish will also be at that size. So it won't be of anywhere near as relevant yeah, as so it was. They won't be that size. It'd be ten fifteen pounds bigger, wouldn't it? But so will every other lake. Not necessarily. Maybe but it, even like if it, it, it might have loads more bigger numbers than the other in, t- in ten years, there could be a fully scaled or a linear in linear that looks that that's like fifty eight, fifty nine, sixty pound. That won't be as famous as the fully though. Was because that was like a a lot rarer than what even a fifty five would be in ten years. Because in ten years there'll be there'll be loads of fifty five okay, well, pounds. Sixty five. Uh, I then. think. But do you reckon? Yeah. Do you reckon that fish is only famous because it was caught on an underwater camera? What made that fish? I think it definitely like, helps. Yeah, that definitely. Because I didn't know it before that. But, yeah. but again, there's so much media going out there now. There's every reason why yeah. you, Tom, make go out there, make a film, catch this fully, sixty five pounds. Thin. Yeah. Well, my money is on Tom Maker. <laughs> 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 but, but I think a real sort of, and again, it, it goes back to media. A real sort of. I don't know, not interesting thing is back then you you would have more of a, I wouldn't say big fish, and we'll talk about the fact that the syndicate, your burr fields and sort of people doing the circuit waters if they can get tickets. But I think that day ticket scene, especially on linear, even on like maybe Mallard, Bluebell, not necessarily Kingfisher or Swan, there is people going there with a mentality of not necessarily looking for one bite in a big one. They want numbers of bites. Yeah. That big mm. hit fishing is definitely what people want. They yeah. don't want to go there. Oh, yeah, no, pe- people don't go to linear to try and target a specific fish, I don't think. You can't. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, su- I suppose you could do in terms of, like, you could just keep fishing B1 time and time again, play the numbers game, and eventually the one you want in will come up. It's hard, but, isn't it? When there's but like, like, carp in there. But, like, I've, I've fished, like, I've fished linear for God knows how many years. And I've only ever had two of the like known biggins. Whereas other people have turned up and caught like the first fish has been Yeah. But yeah. you know what I mean? But it's just, it is literally just It's a numbers oh, game. Yeah. You can't do anything different that's gonna target out that big one. But really, then do, do you like think that. when you're targeting like a fish? An horrible ghost in a farm pond. Pretty much. Didn't want to say it, but at least it came from you. <laughs> Concrete farm pond. Do you do you play the numbers game or do you like, how do you go about trying to catch that fish? It's a lot easier, isn't it? Because it's one in 40 as opposed to one game, in 2,000. Yeah. The, 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 the fish that I'm trying to catch at the moment, there's about 18 carp in the lake. No, there's not. There's 2,000. Be yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> there's literally 18 carp, so, and that, the, the, the common's the big one. Yeah. One pound common. So for that, like, obviously, it's an... It's a numbers game unless you see, but yeah. that, this is the thing for me, the part of it that I love so much, is you will see the big one feeding yeah. in that margin down there and you'll go, that's a spot marked. Or yeah. you'll see it constantly cruising on that part of the around that island and it's like, that's... A, and when you catch it, it's like you've put pieces together Yeah, and that's the kind of angling that I find really... It's, it's an achievable numbers game, yeah. isn't it? You it's an achievable numbers, numbers game, game. Yeah. and you it's see the car linear. Game. You could play the numbers game, but yeah. you're actually... 
I, I, so for example, if I put the rod out and I've seen the big one, when it goes, I'm thinking, this is a very good chance yeah. this could be the big one. Whereas if on linear, if the rod goes, you haven't got a clue what yeah, the hell I, it is. Yeah, I suppose it's a complete like, guess. Yeah. And then it's the big one. Wow. And yeah. that's the excitement, but it's not like a. But I suppose you get a excitement. better, better like feeling of achievement targeting uh, the fish. Not rather like I, I'd say, say, say there was a lake, your park lake, eighteen mm. carp, forty pound common, or I'm fishing on manor, eight hundred fish, forty pound common. If I was to catch mm. a forty pound common and you caught yours, you'd be way happier than me. I'd say because mm. you've went out your your way to target that. All I've done is achieved getting a few fish feeding on the spot and. I've just hooked it by luck. May, maybe. It depends on the severity of it. If I caught like a £40 common and it was like a target fish, yes, it would mean more than catching one from somewhere. There's loads in a data kit. There was a bit of luck. But on the flip side, if I went to linear and dropped on, like filming or just went for yeah. a social and I like racked up a few bites and caught the big one, I'd still be absolutely yeah. gassed because oh, I'd be like, I... the odds of that were slim and that's mental i've yeah. just caught the big one but i don't think your type of fishing as in target fishing mm. is any different to somebody sitting on burfield trying to catch the burfield common or somebody sitting on pingewood or somebody sitting on those circuit waters st i it's not but mine's short mine's on a way the, shorter time frame and mine's but it's i'm not, never competing with the angler but it's not it's, the but it's not though is it you're not on a shorter time frame because you don't know when it's going to end you could be doing that for ages couldn't you true but the only difference is accessibility. You ain't going to get a ticket for Burfield, but if Burfield was in London and your boat was near it and that common was there, mm. that would be your target, I, wouldn't it? I think the urban scene is like cart fishing again. And, but then in the urban, urban scene, you do have a day ticket scene. You do have a circuit water scene. Do you break you do it down have, again? I think you can break it down like completely again. Then you've got yeah. the completely wild ones in like the rivers and the canals. Yeah, you've the got unknown jobs. The unknown ones. You've, I think urban scene it's not a category in the sense of His own category data yeah. kit euro wild circuit it's everything just take in it. everything in it everything in it yeah yeah i like that i don't th yeah i don't think and that's why you can Jacob stick one in there but i wouldn't fish it what, what about if you what stuck if you stuck a six syndicate in the middle of london yeah and give me a ticket but i had to book it a swim then I wouldn't fish it. Okay. Doesn't matter what's in there. But that's because I'm not really like a big fish angler. I'm not like, I want that. I'll do anything for that. Like I, I obviously want decent sized carp and a nice carp and I always have a target fish, but I'm not like a big, big fish angler. So I would, I would not sit on Burfield for five years. I'd just be like, life's too short for that. I would rather go and fish somewhere, that's somewhere that's realistic. That's a good chance. Because Burfield isn't just, it's not like it was in the olden days where like, you go down there days. and you know, but you know what I mean? Like you read the stories and you see how nineties, no, olden days, but you see how people catch, how people have caught over the years. And it, to me, it gets less inspiring every time because but it's, I feel it gets less inspiring. <laughs> I think every it does. Time. Yeah. Cause that, the last rumor I heard was everyone just drives bait boats out and puts a drone up in the air and sees carp and they're all queuing for the same swims. Still no one's Go on, Henry, get yourself yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> well, that means it's like process of elimination and it's more luck than anything else. Whereas if before there was more of an adventure to it, so it's not, I just wouldn't, that's not a bit You of me. need that adventure element by the That's not yeah. a bit of me. The, the, like, the, no. I was going to say this to Finn, the, the, the difference between when it's busy, okay? Mm. So like your Burfield ticket, not everybody can get hold of it. So access is an issue, which may, means that anybody who catches it, access is probably one of the biggest things you've got to tick off. You've got to be able to get a ticket to go and angle for that fish, which is viewed yeah. as the creme de la creme. The people that have got those tickets are the people that are probably synonymous with the industry or whatever, because you've got to commit a lot of time and effort to it. And, and it is that. And that's why that whole scene is sort of still alive. It might be a little bit more ultra carpy, undergroundy in terms of you don't hear much about it, maybe. Mm. But it's definitely there. But for you, especially on day tickets, and for the people that do that on those really ultra busy sort of carp waters where you've got brilliant anglers fishing them, your Dintons, your likes of, mm. to get a result... There's got to be that buzz of of basically bettering ninety percent of the population of people that are fishing it who are not catching those fish and getting those results. And there also has to be, and I think I've spoke to people who do this, especially BCAC matches and things like that, who can fish at a level whereby they can 
do things, angle, accuracy, casting distance, whatever it may be, but they are head and shoulders above you sort of regular anglers. And that shines through when they go onto those complexes. That's got to be a motivation or something that, that you enjoy on, on the likes of linear, isn't it? Yeah. When you were talking about that bear, I was thinking, I listened to Wayne and Ryan's podcast recently yeah, and like listening to them, like, when me and Steve were in BCAC afterwards, one thing that we always do is we try and review it. Like what went well, what went like wrong? Why didn't we qualify? Why did we get beat? What we, could we have done better? And like in a normal fishing situation for me, I don't do that. Like I'll, when I'm in a competition, it's completely different to yeah. when I'm at linear. Like if I went to linear, I, I don't know how to word it because like when I go fishing, I try. Like when I go out filming with Nash, I try. When I go for my own pleasure, I try. But when you're in a competition, it's just a whole new different level. And I'm not sure it, even if I could compare that like level of competitiveness and like drive in my own fishing to beat other people, if that makes sense. I'm, yeah. tr- I'm trying to fit out to word it. It's like, it's such a weird way to describe like. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That, that competition element, has that got bigger? Has that grown in recent times? Yeah, to be fair, like, Going back to when we said about a driving factor, that probably is the factor that like drives me. Not that I'm ever good because I never win any competitions, but that is for the like because when I go fishing, I don't go fishing to try and beat everyone on that lake and be like, "Ha, huh, I'm better than you." Like I just go fishing to go fishing. But in a competition, you're obviously there to beat everyone. Like that is your drive. You have to be on your game, though, don't you? It's like normally, best, if you yeah. miss a couple of spots, you're like and you're the, a couple of people on the lake, it's like not the end of the world. But if you're in a competition, yeah. you want to be absolutely pin tight because if there's 10 fish in your swim, 10 fish in ears, and you don't fish too well, you've lost. So you need to be like, so I get that. Yeah, you'd have to be. But then, then on the same side, of all that I enjoy it, it's really not enjoyable at the same time. It's yeah, just okay. pure stress. stress and hell. Like you, yeah. you're not sleeping for 40 hours, you're not eating properly. By the end of it, you're probably going to sleep for 24 hours. Your tackle is a mess. You're physically just like destroyed. Mm-mm. I wouldn't want to do that on my own fishing. Like if if you're going out and doing that on your own fishing, it's just like that's what these yeah, guys I, do in Europe. Isn't it? I don't know if it's the competitive thing that that's why people like. I don't know because I'm really competitive in everything I do, like super competitive. But Tell competition, me about it. but competition fishing. You're not in your angling though, are you? I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. Try and I fil- really am. You can't film Henry fishing. <laughs> He already wants yeah, four yeah. rods out while I'm trying uh, to film him because yeah. he wants to be like, wants to catch the most, like he's bare. Yeah, but you're not competitive against, uh, co- when I'm saying competitive, I'm not saying against a carp. I'm not saying what you've got to do to catch one. I'm talking about you wanting to compete against other animals. No, he and does. You better. Me and him compete if, if against I, if, each other when we're filming. It's, if I, like, let's say I go, and for instance, me and Jacob are filming. It's, it's not, it's not that I want to beat Jacob, but if, if I go and I've caught four and Jacob catches seven, I'll be annoyed at myself because. There's 11 bites to be had there, and I've only had four of them. Like, there was 11 chances to catch a So car. he's competitive. Time. <laughs> but we're both a little bit competitive. Yeah. He's a little bit more. I think, every, every, I think every angler must have that element of mm. competitiveness. It's just the if level. You don't have but, that, you'll be slow. But that, that, for me, in fishing, that is the most, that is the thing that I would least like to do. That's the only thing I think I wouldn't really be that excited to do out of all the types of carp fishing. See, I love the match style. I think the match style's sick. I don't do it in carp fishing because I think the difference between match fishing in carp fishing and yeah. in like your other side of the course fishing is that difference between how many fish are in your swim is yeah you put, like if you're canal fishing the sh- you're looking at shoals of roach and the few be- better bream that might come along and that might win you the match but if you're carp fishing the weights are so significantly bigger if you're not on all the fish, there's not that many carp. You can fish your very best and absolutely useless. And, and so that's what hate. That's what I couldn't deal with. My, I could be the best angler on that lake and do everything perfect and still come last. But with like, if you're tip fishing or you're fishing on the canal, you will still get catch a few. And for me, I'm too ADHD to sit there 48 hours, not be able to move when the fish are all over there and mm, watch someone else catch. That would drive me insane. I couldn't. I think, think one worse. thing as well with like the competitions is you don't appreciate like what you've caught like you don't care yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, without sounding big-headed you don't care like what that fish looks like whether whether it's the big plate well big plated would be a different story mm. but if you caught like a scaly 30 pounder yeah you literally don't care it's just, it's just points it's just point like at the end of the day where it's points points get you through it's yeah. get a quick photo on your iphone next to the sign just mm. to prove you're caught in you flip it back and at the end of the day if you don't qualify 
you you'll never look back at them photos. It's yeah. like, oh, they were good times. Like, I look back at the photos from last weekend and I'm like, what a load of shit. Get deleted <laughs> now. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But yeah. if if I qualified, it'd be like, oh, look at that scaly banger. Like, I didn't appreciate mm. it back then, but... Is that growing, though? Is there more people entering? the Because obviously, like, we had British oh, Carp Cups. Are. British Carp Cups is, is, is no yeah. longer doing anything. Eric's, the pairs, again, you've basically got BCAC. Are there more people entering? I, I think those? it's one of the scenes that's probably not growing and probably is probably you make it... Yeah, it it, it is, it. and it isn't... Bi- Good Pick answer. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, is it, it might no. be, but it might not be. No. <laughs> <laughs> BCAC is growing, but the competition side of things aren't. But there's little regional matches like you've got Burners, uh, Burners oh, Hole, yeah, your Cup, cup. you've got Farlow's Cup, Farlow's Cup, the Elite Cart Masters, but BCAC. Look at him helping himself. Oh, I tell you what, <laughs> they're on it like a pack of Simos down Linear B. <laughs> <laughs> but BCAC. This year, tickets sold out within like minutes. Like our okay. qualifier sold out in four seconds. But for you, fucking hell! <laughs> no, because I missed out. I went to enter four seconds later. It was sold out. Swear down. It hit four ten o'clock. Seconds. <laughs> yeah, swear down. Honestly, that's what it's like. So me and Steve both waited there. Bang on ten o'clock. Whatever time is. Both both pressed enter. He got a ticket. I didn't like it. Sold out that quick, but but that that's but, a matter of there's not a many competitions about though, isn't there? But they've all gone to one. Yeah, that, that's what I'm that's what I'm aiming at. But when I've started talking about Bernie's Cup and all that, I've started thinking there are still a lot of smaller matches. Like e- Eric's was a big competition back in the day. That's Fair's no longer big, a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not like we've got the same scene in terms of match fishing that that there is. On the continent, there's a lot more. Oh matches. yeah, mm. yeah. There's a lot more of a scene now. I don't know, and I, 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 I'm judging by the amount of people that are springing up doing another competition. Like the BYCAC didn't go ahead a couple of years ago, yeah. did it? Because it couldn't get funded to do it. Yeah. I know it's back now, and hopefully it will go ahead forever more because you've come through yeah. that. There's a lot of anglers that have come through that. But again, I don't know if that match fishing scene is growing. What I tend to see, and again, I can only go off what I see on social media because that is the information vine. If people are not going to put it on there, then fair play to them, they're holding it back, is when I think modern day scene, I think urban fishing because I've seen more media probably about it in the last few years. I see that European scene and I see the sort of big carp sort of carpy crew going out on the likes of Dinton and, and those type of venues. I, do, I see day tickets being busy as well. Yeah, match fish is, isn't it. I don't see match fishing. Yeah, yeah. Like No, it, not on socials. I don't yeah. see somebody videoing yeah. a match. I might see a match angler like a, a, a course angler, mm. like Fisher Mania's yeah. just been. Like, mm. but I don't Even see... that, I, I saw things like that. That seems so much less, I don't, I don't know the word for it, but it didn't seem as big as it used to be like 10 years ago when you used to watch that on... Sky Sports. We used to be on Sky Sports One, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I just don't think that's. So, I just don't think the social media side is big because my brother's like an absolutely dedicated match angler, brother-in-law. They just don't don't think he even he doesn't have Instagram. They don't. Then it's more like community mm. like vibes. Yeah, let's it's not, not smash match fishing here. Yeah. In terms yeah. of the course anglers carry on. That's like. But no, no, I'm not saying in a bad way. They just they're not as. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah I know. It's like that carpy scene. It's like everyone wants to be on Instagram. Whereas if on, I think match fishing is not quite like I, that. I, th- I, th- I think the issue as well is match fishing can, like I, like for me, it's really, I just wouldn't want to do it. It's very, it's not fishing in some ways for me. It's not, yeah. for me, what for, you me, really me see is fishing. for me, it's fishing's about hunting. Yeah. It's a hunt and you can't hunt when you're competition fishing. And a lot of, the, a lot of what I like about fishing, you remove from, like Finn said, you don't appreciate the fish. They're just points. I I don't really like, and I think a lot of people, it can be quite controversial like that. So, whereas even though I fucking hate urban fishing, I think it's, I can't stand it. I can watch his films and really enjoy it and appreciate mm. it. And when he does catch a nice one, I can really appreciate it. Same with the circuit waters. I'm, I've never had a, I'll talk about circuit waters in a little bit, but you, everyone appreciates. When the Burfield Common got yeah. caught by Simon Scott, yeah, yeah. everyone knew about it. Everyone mm. was talking about it that day for the for the next couple of weeks. Like, I just think competition fishing doesn't have that same draw for everyone. Yeah. And maybe that's why it's not growing as much. I always think with match fishing and competition fishing, it's the only people who really care about it are the people who do it. And that it's yeah. not, that's like that community yeah. and it's no one outside of that is really drawing that's a good point, people actually. in as much. I always, I always think that with it. Because there's styles of angling that you might not want to do, but you watch it and go, that's sick. Like I watch fishing videos 
of things that I would never do, even if I had the accessibility, but I still watch it and get a buzz and enjoyment mm. out of it. Mm. Like you say, certain industries like your match fishing and your your um more like course fishing match for it's like anyone outside doesn't care. Mm. Yeah. So it is more of a close community, I guess, yeah. What about like a big one, and this goes across all the different types of angling that we do, but influence and fashion. You look back and make there is, whether that be in rigs, you're going back to, again, the glory years of the hinge stiff rig. you got Terry in his chunky knit cardigan and everybody doing it and all that sort of stuff. Modern day trends fashion. Like, what what sticks out for you with regards to your own angling, your own discipline, your own experiences? Ronnie separation claw. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Still, I knew you were going to say that. You, mate, that. <laughs> I set it up there. He's absolutely buried it. Yeah, Ronnie Riggs probably, isn't it? <laughs> Ronnie separation claw. Um, <laughs> it's not even what it is. It is. What is it? Ronnie slip, slip Ronnie. D. Slip, slip Ronnie, Ronnie separation. Ronnie. Slip Ronnie. <laughs> separation. He doesn't have that. Does he have that word in there? No, yeah. he just adds it no, every time. No, it's separation. He goes, this is Henry. He goes, he goes, I've used the Ronnie. I'll do the exact thing. I've used Ronnie a couple of years now. And when I first started using the traditional Ronnie, I'd say, I'd say three in 10 were hook pulls. <laughs> got it down. Three in 10 were hook pulls. Since using that little bit of added separation with the slip Ronnie, I've actually had one in 50 hook pulls. There's no doubt. There's no argument in my mind that it loses less fish. To be fair, we went to France. I'll, t- I'll, I'll be trying quick. Try and quick. I'll try and be quick. Went to France. We're fishing like in the spring. It was just one of them days where we just couldn't keep a rod in the water. And don't know what was going on, but I was hook pulling fish like there's no tomorrow. And I've never lost that many fish to hook pulls in my whole angling life than what I lost over those two days. How many? Like probably lot, hook pulled five. It was embarrassing. And like I had a good, we were both playing fish at the same time. Video's coming out next month, another little plug. And we're both playing a fish, I had it on for ages and then just boom. And then again, boom. And he was, and he was really annoying me because he was going, <laughs> need that separation. Behind me, and I was losing. I mean, I was thinking, Henry, I've used this rig and I've never lost as many carp. But I actually listened to him, and I think it's in Europe where the carp are bigger, the more competitive, maybe not as pressured. They, they're feeding like mad, so you're just getting tiny, like the hook's turning too quick and it's catching him on the edge of the lip. Whereas if his separation is flying further back, that's his theory. Um, but, you, you were losing because of the way you play them. But in the UK... The way you play them. In the, I kept saying well, he hated it. Pointing his rod and walking yeah, back. Yeah, I, was, I kept saying to him, I, th- I, I was like, I think it's the way you play them. He's like, it's not the I way I play I was losing my mind with him. But yeah, in the UK, I, d- I don't, honestly I feel like I never lose carp. But yeah, in the France, it was that day was awful. You'll see the video. It was awful. So yeah. Ronnie yeah. Riggs is definitely one. That's his... That is fashion. That is revolution. Like, they have been, haven't they? Like They are used and used mm. to the nth. That is a modern day best, belt. Like, huh? See, I just think that if you put rigs into, if you have a criteria for what you need from a rig, the Ronnie just, if you had a score system, the Ronnie wins without a shadow of a doubt. Ronnie rigs, that's a lot of publicity as well, I think. But yeah, Ronnie rigs, change hooks, I get that. Small bait and like that small higher trot, higher tracked pop-up fishing, that's definitely been there, hasn't it? That, for, if I, if well, I think it depends, of... It depends, again, it goes to when you're on the scene, that's been a thing since... Back late noughties, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Since the late noughties. But it's been using, if you go now, especially if you go to a day ticket complex, I guarantee you somebody's got a bucket of crush boily, scope hemp, squid. Scrape squid. <laughs> hemp, some pellet, some corn, and they're fishing Ronnie's with little higher tracked, glugged up, mega super pop ups. Do you know what I mean? Job done. That'll be, no, that'll I, be a lot. Maybe, but I don't know. I think a lot of people are also fishing two bits of fake corn. Yeah, I you reckon. I, yeah. I reckon, like, like I'm not talking in terms of like Europe and the urban scene, but like day ticket wise, like maggot worms, they're massive now. Yeah, yeah. Heart, like using plastic sweet corn, double plastic sweet corn, Couple double of yellow tigers in the edge. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like I think that sort of like boomed because it used to be like an edge. Now it's not. I think there'll always be like a cycle of like it's, it's always happening. It always will. There's always going to be a cycle of the next trend, the next new thing. Like everyone used to, like I don't see it as often now, but five years ago, everyone used to have the rod super tight folded mm. handles. And I think people <laughs> are starting to go away from that trend because they realise they look like just, yeah, like, they're definitely going away with this he's guy. He's a proper, oh, he, he goes he, mad at me because I have my rod, because my I use like wider buzz bars. So he, a bit he, wider uses, right, he uses the widest three rod buzz bar for two rods. 
And they're like for two. Oh God, they're no, like this that. is a good debate. They are like this that. And I, I was saying to him, you're you're supposed to be representing national. Nah, like, I know it doesn't one. make a difference, but we're making a film here. You're supposed to. It's, your gear's supposed to look good. It looked awful. Okay, so here's it the looked thing. like he'd just gone down to Argos. Maybe I'm wrong. Set. To be totally honest, <laughs> right? Who do you agree with? I want honest answers. Go on. It's not the widest buzz bar. It's a three rod buzz bar. The rods are about this apart, yeah? So they are quite spread out a little bit. So they are wide three rod buzz bars. It's a wide. No, it's, it's a, not it's, a it's wide, a wide three rod. It's, I guarantee you it's a wide three rod buzz bar. Okay, so I they're like this, Hassan. They're like, they're like this, yeah? What's worse? That, so my rods being my two rods, right and far left. So the middle one's not screwed in. What's worse? This or him... With like a with a tripod. Tripod? What are you <laughs> on about? With like a rod pod, sorry, not tripod. With no, a... I'm not. When have I? I've never used a rod pod. When well, I'm he'll use a three rod buzz bar and he'll put a, two rods, a rod on the right and a rod in the middle. Yeah. And have the That's left better, one isn't missing. It? That's no, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. There's no way. <laughs> I'm with Henry. Yeah, that looks thank so you very weird, much. Though. Thank you Why very much. Because then you've got it all one side heavy and you've got a, like a mi- missing thing. You want to put a butt rest on it as well and just leave it. That looks weird. Surely you'd rather have it on the right and the left and have a gap I'm, in the middle. I'm against having rods super, super tight, but I like having them tight. And the way that he does it is the way like everyone... So if you put two rods on a three rod, you'd leave the left one empty. Yeah. Leave the left or the if, right. If yeah. I was fishing... Like two rods apart, I'd have them both on single sticks and not on a on a free rod buzz bar at all. If I've got a buzz bar, they're all in relatively tight sort of as tight as possible, mate. isn't it? Yeah, and you wouldn't have your set up no matter what you did. It, I know it, he's. I can it only imagine. Awful. But are you like all following trends with all this stuff? Yeah, like, no, it's just how no, you no, no, no. That is that is me. Just like is that a trend? Well, yeah, to but, have, have them two on one side and have one empty because you know you're going to get laughed at. Well, practic- I just practicality, no, I don't, I don't practicality, I give it. <laughs> I don't think it, I think it'd be pretty harsh. Someone patch a swim saw that. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but maybe with yours. One side heavy. Maybe with yours because it is ridiculous. Yours is so but bad. But practicality. <laughs> it would be a bit. Mate, practicality. Like, yours is for one. But, because it was hard to get the sticks in the ground. Otherwise, I'd have gone singles. It was like pebbles. Right. But yeah, all right, I'm wrong then. Well, I'm not wrong. I don't think but, you're wrong. But you lot would all go. One side heavy. It's a bit like your, your trousers today, mate. Do you know what I mean? We've listen, all had a laugh. It's not but really, they're functional. They're functional. Do you know what I mean? You can dance in them. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a that. Well, there's definitely trends and stuff, but I think yeah, I think when you're doing buzz bar stuff, you're generally fishing tighter. If you're fishing, I don't apart, need to be singles. trendy. That I, do, I you just don't, get you're told an off. urban scene man. But I get told off for looking unprofessional and like, oh, people won't. Do. Alan once gave me a big lecture on this. Right, we were fishing together, and he meant. Because Alan's super, you know, his pod looked perfect all the time and, it, and mine looked a bit scatty. Like, I have rods, one, like, worse back in the day, one used to be higher, one used to be low and stuff like that. Feed rod in the middle. And Alan would say, you can't, <laughs> Alan would be like, you can't have it like that, you can't have it like that. So if someone walks I'm past and they go, you're representing Nash, you yeah, can't have it all exactly. like that. So I've had to change because for me, I didn't even think about that. Looking carpet and cool and folded handles, I don't care about all that. But because I work for a company, I get that if someone looks in my swim and my three scopes are looking really nice and polished next to each other, they, it will look more desirable. But when he when same. he starts moaning at me on a, on like a pleasure trip... It's not it, a pleasure trip, we're making... It does get on my nerves a little bit, but it's fine. But no, I'm, I'm, I've had the same lecture from Alan. I, I still get it. Because it, I, it doesn't fucking matter at the end of the day what your gear looks like. It really doesn't. Yeah. And I used to not care. But yeah, when you're going out, making Filming. a film for a company, that's paying for you to do it. Yeah. And you fucking rock up. With that, it was so bad. You could, I could walk between the middle of them. Who caught more? I could walk. Oh, that On that one, because I kept pulling them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, th- I think. I think another. Cool. I think going back to the question <laughs> <laughs> is uh, it's three rods on a spot. I think it's the biggest, biggest yeah. thing I've noticed. I think that's a real big. Because I remember, like now, every, it's not just when you go to data kits. So people will do that anywhere. Like oh, to- yeah, yeah. To- Tom and Tom and. Um, <laughs> Down when they smashed up bled for the social, they were fishing like spot fishing like that. Mm. So I think um, I think that's a that's probably the big one of the big changes I've seen and being tram lining and being super. I think it's just the three for me that puts me off it. What, putting three on, yeah, because when you got a spot going, I've I've put two next to each other, but three just feels mad. Like to have three lines going that close together, it's just you alien got to me. Forty carp coming down, yeah, that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, three, yeah, three, yeah, yeah. You got three. I think I, campaign over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all of them. <laughs> I think. Um, I think. I think one thing that like the modern scene always gets smashed for is the, is this trend and this influence and like 
how everyone just does stuff to be trendy. But since cart fishing started to become a big thing in the late eighties, nineties, everything's been influenced by media. But I, Ollie always makes me laugh because he puts something up that sums it up perfectly. It was when Dick Walker caught Clarissa, and he did an advert in a fishing magazine stating it was on like a size six, whatever this hook, mm. and it wouldn't he wouldn't have caught it without this one. People have been influencing and there's been that media influence for as long as carp fishing's been popular. The only difference now is, is the quantity and the speed of it. But it's also because, not just for social media, the medium you do it on, it's also because there's more people doing it. So is there yeah. going to be more, more influence like that? You have to push like it that? even more to top the other competitor. Exactly. It's not even, well, it's not even, it's not even companies doing it. It's, it's just, it's, it's any angler doing it. They, they all... Do you think that's a bad thing, though? Like, uh, like not... It makes the content more saturated and harder to digest, I think. Maybe, but it also means that it gets better. Like, if you compare... Me and Alfie were talking about the other day. When I joined Nash just under five years ago, if you posted a decent portrait image on Instagram, taken with a proper camera, a view of the fish, it would, like, do ridiculous. Mm. Do crazy. You'd get whatever 500 followers from it. It would do really, really well. Mm. Now, everyone does that. Like, the the, it's, it's meant that media's gotten so, so much better. If you compare... Films. If you go to Nash TV and look at what we put out five years ago, the, just the difference in, especially the, like the the mean difference, is just crazy compared mm. to the content that's going out there. Like some of the stuff we put out five years ago, you we wouldn't even dream of putting that out now because it's just so. Yeah, the, that was my work experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, me a <laughs> but the quality difference is. <laughs> 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 We're still putting them out. <laughs> That's a joke. I'll drop you. But in, <laughs> but in a weird way, some of them older films, I, it's hard for me because I obviously now it's a job where it never was before. Yeah, I yeah. find it hard to watch fishing films that much now because I'm I'm fishing all the time, I'm editing all the time. So it's rare that I find a film that really inspires me. But like back in the day, the films might not have been filmed and edited to the same calibre, but they may like. I find a weird enjoyment out of watching yeah, them older but, styles because they're more vlogging and stuff, but, which is what I like. But they're like, they're like the classics, like Eurobanks the 2. The Urban Banks and the Eurobanks. Yeah, Eurobanks yeah. 2, yeah. Um, Passion for Angling. Well, some like, of them are awful the impossible. and filmed awfully. Yeah, I get like, that. They are, you do go back and watch them now and go, this is incredible, but that's because they were like, they, were the they are incredible films. But if you go back and watch just like any random an YouTubers, an in-session at Linear 10 years ago compared to an in-session at Linear now, yeah. they're just worlds apart yeah. in quality. So I think it, I think there are good parts of it. because It drives so much, it makes things a lot more easy for people to come and join the sport. There's obviously that other side where, again, it's going back to because there's so much money into it where it is commercial and you can see that it's trying to sell a product or which is, it does take it away because for certain people, for, for 99, we're such in a privileged position. And I've even felt us saying it a few times where we're coming from that privileged position where we work in fishing so it's a lot easier for us to say certain things but at the end of the day for most people fishing is a hobby that's exactly what it is and I mean it still is a hobby for all of us as well of course but we've got the element where we we work in it as well so when that there's that side of your hobby and there's that commercial element that's steeping in more and more to it yeah it does take away from it, especially something as romantic as as what fishing can be mm. um, so that is definitely the downside but I think overall it's like with social media yes it's in general, there's negative things with it, not just in fishing, but I think in general, it is a net benefit. I think that... Yeah, yeah, I'd say definitely on, on the on the whole scheme, it's definitely a net benefit. One element that's definitely associated with the modern scene, tech. I know there's a lot of people that are anti-tech, but we cannot say whether that be the carbon that we use in our blanks, whether that be the processing for all the gear, whether that be drones, whether that be underwater cameras, bait boats, an RT7 over there, deep as whatever it might be, that has definitely come into it. You boys, I mean, relatively limited with regards to sort of day ticket stuff because there's a lot of rules that prohibit stuff on certain day tickets like bait boats, etc. But if you're in Europe, I definitely see a lot of that European scene. I spoke to Voos and I spoke to Samir. There's a massive load of tech whereby it's a completely different skill set probably than UK mm. fishing. I've, I've got such a black and white view with it. Yeah. I, th- I think if you're going out and your sole aim is to catch as many big carp as possible, that's your aim, and you're not using tech to the full advantage, then you're you're wrong. Like you need if if that's your aim, then 
why wouldn't you use the technology? I just yeah, don't understand yeah, yeah. why you wouldn't do it. If you're going out and you just want to relax for the day or that you've got these other elements to your fishing and because of that you don't want to use the technology, fair enough. Like if that's what if your that your goal is different to mine in that sense that when I'm going fishing because when I go fishing, my goal is to catch as many big carp as I possibly can. So why wouldn't I use a drone? Why wouldn't I use an echo sounder? Why why wouldn't you? They're tools to help me achieve my goal. There's no ru- there's no rules in carp fishing. I think it's just a l- I do want to agree with you. But I and I am forced to have to use technology to my advantage because if I don't I'll just I'll just <laughs> no no but Nash don't make bait boats or drones so I don't have to use it in terms of by contract. But if I don't use drones, and I mean, don't use bait boats, but if I don't use a drone to find the carp, someone else will. They'll catch more than me, and I won't be able to compete with the, those people. So for the in terms of it being my job and to keep active and catch as many fish as possible, like Henry said, I have to, but I still see the other side of it. At which point does it go too far and actually a lot of it doesn't come down to skill anymore. If it's all about getting as many big fish as possible, why don't me and five of my mates jump in there with a net and just trawl them all no, out? That, no, that's a stupid argument. But a wit- no, it is. But at which point does it get to the point where you're driving a drone out and dropping the rig for you and an, ele- I, an electronic it, thing reels it in and, and it nets it for you and then you're not doing anything? At which point does it become where you're actually not doing anything and then you're not hunting anymore, you're using technology to do everything for you? I think with, with fishing, there's like, there's there's three stages to it. It's it's the information collection, how you collect, gather information, mm. how you analyze that information, and then how you execute it. If there's something technology that crosses over all three of those pillars of fishing, and it's no more, then yeah, okay, I see your point there. But like a drone, for example, all that's doing is increasing my information collection collecting the way i date gather data when i'm fishing that's all it does it's not it's not processing that information for me i have to process that information what i'm seeing I, it, when i look on the drone screen and see some carts moving past it doesn't pop up and go there's carts moving past here that one's just dropped down and moved on again it means that the spot here is where you want to place your bait mm. it doesn't do that no and, and it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't go put the rod out for yeah. me like y- yes i could use bits of information that do help every single pillar the, the the one that's the most difficult is the information analysis and i think that's where you can see for, for the type of fish i do i think that's when you see it who's a better angler is how they process information do you think technology can get like too much though like- I, I think if you're going to call a line on carp fishing technology the line you should have called it at is bite alarms yeah because that takes a hell of a lot more that's taken more skill out of any that's taken more out of fishing than any other bit of technology has been added to it. Because all of a sudden, that you, you now you can fish three rods. Before you couldn't fish three rods, you basically could only really fish one rod. Yeah. Okay, maybe you could fish two or three during the day, but I just think it, I think bite alarms have made the biggest, the biggest technolo- technology change in fishing. And if you're going to call a line at some point, then you'd have to call it there. Yeah. No, nah, I just think mate, I think the line's gone. Look yeah, at that's line. what I'm the line, saying. Exactly, the, line, the lines, mate, the well, lines. Well, well, that's well, what I'm everything we use tech for. There isn't one mm. aspect of life. I, I didn't go to the takeo anymore, mate. I'm just on just eat or an app. It's, it's the line is gone, but the problem becomes, and it will be more integrated into to fishing, even UK stuff as well as foreign stuff. The problem becomes is when you've got all these new things that are happening, whether they be drones, whether they be whatever, that have never been here before. So there's going to be an infrastructure problem with regards to sort of maintaining that chaos when everybody's fishing with them. And also, realistically, they are that much of an edge that if you don't use them and you choose to go down the traditional route of mark of float fishing or whatever it may be, you are a massive disadvantage, isn't you? But that's what I mean, sorry. But like, I'm not saying... I'll use it because of that reason, but I'm saying I would rather we didn't have it. As in like, say for example, pick like a shit hot angler, like let's go with Terry Hearn, because everyone knows Terry Hearn. Let's go Terry Hearn and let's put him on a lake with no tech. Okay, let's, he's allowed bite alarms, but he's not allowed bait boats or drones or an echo sounder. And you put him next to an average angler 
there's a very good chance the average angler catches more carp than him. More than Terry Hearn. If he's on a massive lake and you he reckon? can't reach the carp, he can't catch what, him. This, this guy's got the, got the tech. This guy's got, like, okay, let's say, random, random guy, fairly decent angler, goes to a lake with Terry Hearn. They're, they're in a match together. Yeah. And he's got a bait boat, a drone, and an echo sounder. And Terry Hearn hasn't got any of them. If they do 50 matches... I bet the other guy, on average, would win every time. So it separates the... There's still, obviously, the pr- the process, like Henry said, you still have to make a decision. You still have to get up yeah. in the morning if the fish have moved off and have the energy and drive to move and chase them and all that. But it makes it so much easier, even when I've used it myself. On a trip with Henry, I, he had a boat. I don't really use boats, and I use his boat. And I'm like, I wouldn't be able to fish that spot if I didn't have his boat, which means I'd be outfished. So I wish it didn't exist for anyone... Even if it was back in the days with no alarms, I wish we were in that era now because then the people with that extra drive that would really shine through. As if now it, it's yeah. like it's all the techs bringing the not so good anglers up, and everyone's now able to catch loads of carp. I think a big problem with it as well, like with technology, like drones aren't cheap, bear boards aren't cheap. So like it, it's drones money, are pretty it, cheap, mate. They're not that expensive. Drones are three hundred and fifty quid compared to what fishing costs nowadays. But, but like, fair enough, that might be cheap. But say for someone who's just getting into fishing, or like someone who's like a lot younger, like that girl of have just like got out of school, like they might not have the money to invest into technology into fishing. Because like, if I if I was ten years ago getting like two quid pocket money, the last thing I'd do is the first bit of fishing equipment I'd buy is a drone. <laughs> Yeah, I like, get, it'd be, I get, it'd I get really, what you mean. But we're not competing with them people because they wouldn't even have no, a three but, I, setup. But, but also those people, they're not going out and buying 20 kilos of boilies, are they? So we're already going to be... So, them so anyway. they're all, yeah. Yeah, they're, they've but, gone and got a tin of sweet corn because that's what they can afford. So I, I get your point. I, people hate I also it though. think as people do hate it yeah. and they're always the romantic ones and they're the people who have drawn a line and fair enough. If you've drawn a line where you want to use it <laughs> in your own fishing, that's on you. But I don't think you can slate people because if their goal, like I said, if their goal is to go catch big carp, yeah. You have to use it. The good thing is as well, and I always this is the biggest thing that I always think people forget that they're doing. You're trying to catch an animal at the end of the day. It's not a fucking robot. It's an animal. And animals, they start to learn. So they start to know when all of a sudden a boat is driven to, directly towards them and it drops a perfect parcel of bait, don't fucking eat it because... <laughs> Last time, last three times you did that, you got caught. So all of a sudden, bait boats, they aren't, they aren't on their edge anymore. In, back in again. All of a sudden, they realise not to hang around in big groups because every time they're in a big group and there's 20 of them, all of a sudden one of them gets caught because if someone's put a drone up, seen 20 carp really easily and gone over there, they start to move off. They start to not be in their upper layers. I think that you did a podcast with Adam Penny recently and I've, it was really, really good one. Best one I've listened to in ages. And he makes a really good point is that... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> best one wow. ever done. The rest were useless. I said the rest were useless. But Adam Penny's... A Adam, Adam Penny, and, he, and he's, he said... I mean, he's done a few posts in certain ways, like, it's never been a better time to go retro. Yeah. And he's he's perfectly right. It's never been a better time to use that really simple hair rig he uses and to fish over a scatter in a 20 mil boilies because no one does it. No yeah. one does it. Everyone's dropping Ronnie's with, prob- like you said, probably quite high trap pop-ups over small parcels of bait, and the carp are soon realising exactly what the issue is with it. And that's exactly what happens, I think. Carp fishing has always, and will continue to do so, maybe with some adaptations with regards to tech. It would come in cycles, won't it? Mm. it, done it it's done it for years. Like, yes, there's been different variations, there's been slightly new components that have come in, but it does just do cycles. And now, more than ever, because of the fact that a lot of people, even everybody, is on media and following media. And what is put out or what is chosen to put out, whether that have a commercial angle on it, whether that just be because it's fashionable and trendy, or whether that because it's going to be outwardly mad aspirational and get people to view it, that is going to drive what the majority of people influenced by that are going to go and do. Because they will. If you go and do the converse, I, I, I'm sure you'll smash them. Do you know what I mean? I've often thought go down to linear and throw and stick boilies if the seagulls weren't so bad. And you'd absolutely... Re- I think Steve Renyard did when he came back, didn't he? I think one of his first sessions, he took a client on B2 or something and he just used big baits when everybody else was bit fishing and he smashed it. Because it is 
just you're not reinventing the wheel. You're just going back round a cycle. For you guys, the when you look at the future, and we're talking about the modern day scene as it is, and we've covered various different aspects of it. When you look at the future, what do you think the next sort of thing is? And I know it's very hard to preempt. What do you think is going to come into play? Anything new? Targeting big bream. <laughs> I'm <laughs> um, I think it would definitely change. Yeah. Like everything's changed over the last fifty years. I think it is going to change. I think it's hard to say where that's going to. I can't think of anything where it's going to lead to. Obviously, over the last few years, social media's boomed. Whether that's going to carry on going, whether it's going to flatline, whether it's going to go down, I'm not sure. I'd say it's going to carry on growing. I'd like know. to think. I'd like to think so. If it drops me and Jacob, I was going to say you, two, I haven't you got, have a job. I, I haven't got a clue. I think it. I th- but, oh, go on. I was going to say. I think the sir, and I wanted to say this earlier is that I think the thing that's changed the most in the past twenty years is the circuit scene. Mm. I think in the late nineties, early noughties, you just go down Yateley Angling Centre, couldn't you, and get a Yateley ticket? Yeah, as yeah. easy as that. I've been trying. I'd love to get a Burfield ticket. I've been trying to get a Saint Ives ticket for a couple of years. I'm trying to get a, a Monks Pit ticket for a couple of years. I can't. I can't get them. And I'd, I'd say like Monks Pit, Saint Ives. Yeah, okay, they are circuit wars, but not like the top end circuit wars. It's so inaccessible to fish circuit waters nowadays. So so difficult. It's not just the price of them. It's also just get getting on a waiting list. And those keep it real, desirable carp that are synonymous with circuit waters, they're getting fewer and fewer and fewer and they're getting bred out by the fish that, that we have today uh, coming through. And yes, whilst I think that you don't know what 10 years times big target fish are going to be, uh, granted 100%, but I feel like 15, 20 years ago, there was a lot more yeah. of that, maybe not even A-class, but B-class circuit water fish. Yeah. Whereas now you've got your your baby blacks, your Burfield commons, whatever but after those after you're like a handful there's not really as many for people to to aspire to it on that level i think i think that's out of all of them that's the 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 segment of coffee that's in the the most the danger top's got narrow on it definitely definitely what, what for you is the yateley car park now uh probably burfield i think it's got to be burfield isn't it like i think i i always just think that what what is the water that when i go abroad and speak to non-English anglers, that's the one that would probably crop up the most that they'll ask questions about. What's the one that when it gets, that fish gets caught, the carp world really does stop. Mm. I, th- I think when you put, think I of it think like that. I think the modern day one's Grenville, mate. Yeah. That British record is coming out of there any time soon, isn't it? <sighs> that's not anywhere near the level of birth. Mate, but that's the, the yeah, yeah, car park, like what are people fishing for? They're fishing for heaven, but also they were fishing for records and big in the time mm. in the landscape of carp fishing yeah. they were the ones maybe maybe I think a lot of it as well like venues that we're probably fishing now such as Grenville or like the docks in London or wherever we fish now it might be special mm. but we don't realise how special it is it until, until it's, it's gone. gone like yeah. I reckon Good when point. them lads used to fish yearly yeah. they knew it was special but they didn't know for like historical such a big thing didn't know where the industry was going so Mm. yeah Yeah, like that's it in 20 years time linear might be a thing of the past it might be gone it might be not what it is now but people might look back and be like oh remember back in 2018 when all them fish were getting Mm. caught like I don't think I think that also goes back to them fish that we were saying earlier about what's coming through I don't think you ever realise what you've got until it's gone like venues fish Mm. Until it's gone, or you can look back at it and be like, oh, that's pretty good. It's sort of like in your own angle and you look back at years gone by and you're like, that was a good year. And that's like historic to you. But yeah. on the bigger picture, I think that's what will happen to me. I think venues. it's who, who are you pleasing as well? Is it the majority or like, because the people who've been in the, in the industry the longest, they won't put the big and out of Grenville even in the same league as the Burfield Common. But I don't people, even. I don't people, know what the Grenville but I don't know what it is. Yeah. And I, I've, I said, I, I, I probably wouldn't fish Burfield because I, I think life's a bit too short and I think it's not, it's not what it used to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, it is a bit more like, 
The, I've, I know someone who, who fished it and he literally said he turned up and he had to put a bucket behind the swim and wait for two days to get yeah. an area. Yeah, I think Burfield is, is changing. But the common is still, I'm not saying, oh, it's no good. The Burfield common still is. It's got to be the best fish in the UK because when it comes out, everyone talks about it. And even though it is different, it still doesn't get caught very often. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and I get the amount of effort you have to put in to catch it is desirable. But it's who yeah. you're pleasing. Yeah, One, the, those anglers don't care about Grenville. The only reason I wouldn't put the Grenville as the next Yale is because it doesn't, I don't know any of the fish in there. They all look, that, as far as I, I feel like it's more of a, you go there and it's, it's like a, it's like a crossover with a day ticket where you're where you're fishing for big hits, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I don't think numbers are big ones. Yeah, they're, they're, you're not going and there's. It's not a, one fish a, target fishing, or, or not even no. like four or five. Like, I, I honestly couldn't. I couldn't name one. If you showed me the, the Grenville Biggin, mm. I feel like I couldn't tell you that that was the Grenville yeah, Biggin. Yeah, yeah. And that was made to get big. The Burfield Common just got big. It was like a yeah, mate. I think, like I, think gotta, I think you've got. I think you kind of got. Nah, I think you've got to accept that going forward now, big fish. Are gonna be they yeah. they were put there with the design to get big like, like that's the way carp fishing but big is going. fully where's but from but um sixty pound fully that's a I'm sure that's a Sim is it Simo? Sim Sim it's Simo. a Simo, but Simo. what I'm but saying that's what is I mean. Like, there's a lot of people who see that and that, that doesn't inspire them. Yeah, but that fish like is grown big. It was like technically designed to grow big. Mm. Mm. So do you not think in like twenty years time that I'll have the same? No. No, to be fair, I don't either. I but don't I'd, but I still think it will know. still have a massive. It has a massive respect now, and it probably will back then, like in the but, future. But you, then you've got to look at places like RH Fisheries. It gets a horrific rap. Loads of people dig it out and say that it's full of wrong uns and whatever. Those fish, as a what Rob's created as a commercial business, is obviously incredibly popular, and it gives people the normal bloke access to big carp. I reckon in ten, fifteen years time. No one's going to give two hoots about them. Yeah. They'll just be normal stock, mate. In a lot mm. of places, that, those babe, that that type of fish, that the heritage, that yeah. whole lineage stuff, I think that'll all go. One thing from but a I day think... ticket access point of view that's definitely going. And you referenced it with that big fully. I had Martin Clark in. We talked about the Waterside Common. Those exclusive booking venues, mm. they seem to be the ones at the moment that are like a lot of anglers. I mean, they might have big fishing, but also just to have the lake exclusive without the busy nature of it and escape like you guys have talked about in Europe, but you mm. get it at home. They seem to be busy and cropping up left, right and centre as well yeah. in terms of what will go forward. I think you'll see, we'll see a lot more of those types. Like of even yeah, church. Right. Like, yeah. ch well, the thing is with church, it's been big for years anyway by now. Probably, but, probably like the original one. Yeah. Isn't it? Probably the original big fish exclusive booking in, in the country. But I, I think you're probably right there. I think there's probably more and more venues where they're a bit of a crossover between the adventure, between the circuit with, with the big fish, between the day ticket where you're going to get a hit. Probably more of them are going to arise. It's trying to, they're a bit more mainstream. And again, it's probably mm. because of the money. Um, I think that that's what's going to come. But then probably the the top percentages of, maybe not the day ticket one, that's always going to be a little bit. It may be even still day ticket where it does become so busy, it's even harder and harder yeah. to to have those edges and really consistently be at the top level of data coefficient but the circuit i think more and more is going to go away the urban one potentially could go more and more away with less venues are letting you actually fish there more people going in and fishing it because although you're saying it's not as popular i think you underestimate mm. how unpopular it was 20 years ago i think if you're comparing it to when you started fishing in london that's mm. still the modern scene like that that's five years but 15 20 20 years I think there's even less people doing it. Oh, definitely, there. yeah. So I think I just don't see them, so I obviously my vision's not it's, it's, accurate. It's like when Jack caught the yeah, that yeah. that river fish recently. I think there were six people fishing that day on the river. Mm. It's out there, mate, the grapevines like that. Yeah. <laughs> Some it goes and it inspires people and they're on it straight away. Those those secrets are definitely mm. harder and, to keep. And I think then going over to Europe, like we said, trying to find those going up to the Alps and finding that 150 acre lake that's you're the only one fishing, you're allowed to use boats, four rods, you can night fish, and it's got 70 pounders that have basically never seen a hook before. They don't exist anymore. Like, And there's going to be less and less and less of them. You might still find waters that have bits of that, but it's never going to be... I mean, the the pinnacle of it is Cassian in the 80s. Like, there's, there's never going to be a Cassian in the 80s again, I don't think. So I think that perhaps the... I think everything is just going more mainstream. Unless you basically. go to America, exactly. America. 
Maybe. Move out there. I think the scene will get wider when people will travel. It's easier to travel. Yeah, potentially. I think, yeah, there will definitely be new. Yeah, maybe that could be it. It's the new uncharted territories that get explored. But I do think that the, 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 the I don't want to say the elite, but the top end of every yeah. segment will become narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower. But then there'll be more and more of these mainstream waters, like the one you said, that sort of tries to cater to a bit of everything for everyone. Yeah. So that when you've got a group of mates, like here, a day to get angler, an urban, <laughs> I knew he was going to and uh, and uh, so, someone likes going to Europe. We can go and book waterside fishery, and yeah, we'd all enjoy it. We'll There's all the bit in there that okay, it wouldn't be your first choice, but you can all go and enjoy it. Yeah. I think that yeah, you're probably right with that one. That's what is going to move more and more. I think a lot of it as well. We've got like you say about them booking venues, but I think like day tickets will turn our booking as well. Like you've obviously mm-hmm. got catch coming in now. You've got other venues. He got his plug in. Got he got his plug in. Has going to be buzzing. <laughs> what what was that? Yeah. How much did he give me? Twenty quid before. Say, <laughs> what did he say? I've not got a hand. It's not www. Give him the full plug. Yeah. Yeah. He's done it. No, but then you've also got there's other companies other than Catch that do bookings. What is Catch? Tell me about it. Oh, let's not. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just joking. Go on, ask Hans Instagram story. For four days but out of the week, I, there'll be I some think, I, I have the weekends off, don't I? <laughs> I think a lot of venues will go to that. Like at Linear now, you've got all of the Tar Farm complex, you've got Hunts, you've got Manor. Like it's likely other lakes on the Linear complex are probably going to change to catch. And I'm sure because fishing's so popular, when you, especially for someone like me, when you're traveling from like three, four, five hours away, the last thing you want to do is turn up to a day ticket not be able to find a swim. However, I know my dad's like a really big fan of it. He can go on, book a swim or book like a spot on a lake. So he knows when he turns up, he's guaranteed that spot. And if fishing carries on getting popular like it is, I think that will be the only way to sort of accommodate the large That's numbers. That's just a numbers thing though, isn't it? But then again, that changes angling because that takes out the watercraft. That yeah. element. If you've booked mm-hmm. a peg, you're then, it's peg management, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've got to go and make the most out of that peg without going out of that but there is a lot of variables that realistically we don't know what we do know and i think you said it quite poignantly finn is like what we have now you've got to get out there enjoy because uh, it will definitely change in a way that probably we don't appreciate what we've got at this precise right now we probably have not a bit of everything that's why we have the best of them all. Yeah, well, yeah, 100%. Yeah. To some degree, we still have those history mm. fish. They like saying 10 years of all the history fish are gone. Yeah, so the best popular, thing yeah. will in the UK may well be to everyone the beginning in Grenville because there isn't history fish anymore. Yeah. So it's the best of the new f- the you, new you era. Basically, yeah, you make what you can now because what you've be got, different, yeah. but we don't know what it's going to be different with in the future. And there's things that are way better than what they were back then. Do too. you reckon, do you reckon people all downhill. back in the day, like you taking the mick out of like, the beast. Do you reckon people used to take the mick out of Mary or Heather or Basil? Probably like, never. You, probably never them. But, but do, you no, can't. But they do you not like... reckon? Do you not reckon people were sat there like, oh look at them people yeah, sat on a ledge? Oh, like, people definitely dug out the people who did forty nights in a year, saying, "What are they? Them and, weirdos doing?" And the people. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, twenty like, years ago, we're getting slagged off by the people from twenty years before yeah. that. A hundred percent. I think that what we got to remember is that everyone. They always look back with the rose tinted glasses when they were yeah. back in their day, when they were in their prime. It was everything was better, but they forget the shit parts. And now what they see and what perhaps they don't like, they think one thing I always think is that people think that like the reason why some kids go fishing nowadays is because they can post it to their Instagram and get loads of likes. Yeah. I'm telling you now, that is not why anyone I know, my age or younger, goes fishing. I can why why would you want to be famous in fishing if you could be famous in any like why would you put your effort to be famous in fishing? It doesn't make sense. I think it's so you can go out in London and say that you're an outdoor lifestyle. <laughs> <Lifestyling, laughs> we'll <laughs> save that for another time. But I'm I, not looking at you, Jacob. <laughs> I'm looking well, at somebody else's Tinder profile. Is that Henry? But I'll tell you a story about that later. He, I can, I, I can probably about, guess. About, he met a girl in a club and she went, what do you do for a living? <laughs> no. I'm like an outdoors influencer vlogger. What do you it's, do? It's a, oh, put tents up and <laughs> look at the lake. Yeah. It's a story about a girl with one leg, so I'll tell you about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. just took a turn for the worst. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> anyway, everyone goes fishing now that I know of because they like fishing and they love fishing and they've got a passion for fishing. The same with why people went 20 years ago, why they went 40 years ago, why they went 60 years ago. So I think that that's what everyone's got to remember before they start slagging off different eras mm. is that 
the fundamental 80% why everyone still goes fishing is exactly the same as it was however many years ago. So whilst some things still change, and you may not agree with some of the changes and you may think that it was better back whenever, the mainstay of why angling still exists is the yeah, same as it's always it. been because it's Just do sick. what makes you happy. Go out and catch some fish. If you like us, bunch of wrong (laughs) carry on doing it and enjoy it. I think that's a good way to round off. Boys, thank you very much for your time, your input. A lot of, uh, you went very deep in plots as well, Jacob. I enjoyed that. Henry decided to slag everybody off. And (laughs) And promote every company in the UK. He did, yeah. (laughs) Incredible. Um, (laughs) Thank you guys for watching and listening. If you've got any comments, put them in the comments on the YouTube video or put them in the comments on whatever platform you downloaded it from. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you again soon with another National Podcast. Until then, Finn, Jacob, Henry, cheers, boys. See you later. Awesome, mate. <laughs>